Ahoy there mateys, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today we find ourselves as pirates and everyone is out to get one another. You'll be playing cards that thwart even the best laid plans, but you'll also be doing a little cheating too, but just don't get caught. Scuttled is the game of piratical shenanigans for 3 to 8 pirates. It takes 15 to 30 minutes to play and is for ages 8 and up. Today, I'll be doing a rule school where I'm going to teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now I placed timestamps below me right in the description of this video just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Without further ado, here we go. <music> Scuttled is the game of piratical shenanigans where your goal is to get rid of or to scuttle your hand of cards and be the first player to go out. When it's your turn, you'll be playing either the same number or color as the card in the face-up discard pile. So here I can play any black card or any colored card that also has the Roman numeral 6 on it. For example, this blue 6. Then the next player can play any blue or any colored six and so on. But there are many special cards like playing this blue cannonball on the blue six, which causes the next player to draw two cards and end their turn. But they might be able to instead stack another cannonball card to the next player, who now would need to draw four cards from the two cannonball cards or stack another and pass it on to the next player. The stacking of cannonballs always ends in laughter. Well, for most of the scallywags. Another special card is the Maelstrom, which changes the direction of play. Other special cards include visiting Davy Jones's locker, skipping the next player, or Shanghai choosing a player to switch hands with, which is a great move if they only have one card left. You can shake things up with a squall, forcing all players to switch hands, or sticking the next player with the tab, forcing them to take a card from each player. But watch out because you can pass the tab on to the next person instead. There's also some powerful wild cards like the Warrant forcing the next player to draw four cards and you get to select the next color. But have no fear, the Warrant can be cancelled by the letter of Mark. And finally there's the Kraken that causes all players to discard their hand and draw a new hand of cards. To set up, you're going to find the deck of cards, and within that, you're going to find one of the cards says Captain. Now you're going to separate that out from the rest of the deck, you're going to decide who's going to be the captain, who's the dealer, and you'll place this in front of them with direction of play heading to the left and clockwise. Then after shuffling that draw deck well, you're going to deal eight cards, they're pieces of eight, face down. Now when you get those cards, you can pick them up and look at them, but don't ever show them to anybody else. After all the cards are dealt out, from the draw pile, you're going to flip the first card over to start a face up a discard pile. Now, in the direction of what the captain says, which is clockwise from the captain, so the player is sitting to the captain's left. If it's a special card, meaning it has text on it like this, they have two options. They can decide to take this card from the discard pile and put a card that has just Roman numerals or numbers on them, those are basic cards, replace it with that. And that essentially would be their first turn. It would go to the next player clockwise. Or they could choose to burn that first card, putting it face down somewhere back in the draw pile and turning over a new card from the top of the draw pile to be placed in the discard pile. And whether they take either of those options, their turn ends and it goes to the player clockwise. Now this special sequence only happens at the very beginning of the game and only once. However, if they burned that card and they flipped over another one, if instead it wasn't a number, but another one of these, they would do the same thing. Meaning they would burn this card and flip over another one. The object of the game is to go out or to scuttle all your cards. If you're able to place the last card onto the discard pile, you've won. Now the game follows the direction of play of the captain card. As I'll show you later, this could change directions, but at the beginning it's gonna be clockwise. So in this case, in the clockwise manner, each player is gonna take a turn and then the next player. On your turn, you can either play a card face up on the discard pile, or instead, you can just draw one card. Now, if you cannot play here, which we'll talk about in a minute, you must draw one card. But if you can play here, you can still decide to draw one card for strategic reasons, but that will also end your turn. So on your turn, in order to play a card, let's see here, this is just a basic card, and that is eight, five, six, seven, eight. Now, you could play 
a card of any color that's also an eight, being the same number, or you could play any card of the same color. This is not an eight, but it's a blue. So you're either matching the color or the number that's there. That's simple, you can only play one of those cards, and that's the next player's turn. There are some differences in cheating you can do, but we'll get over that later. But there's many special cards in the game, like that's a blue card, the next player might play a blue cannonballs card, which means the player next to them needs to take two cards from the top and that's their whole turn. However, cannonballs can stack. So the player that was about to get affected by this taking two cards instead might have another cannonball card. If this is the same card, different color, that's okay. These stack, which means the next player from them has to take not just two, but a total of four. And let's say the next player goes, I don't want to take four. I've got cannonballs. Doesn't matter what color, because we're stacking them. Now that next player is going to have to take six of them if they can't stop that in any way. Now one of the special cards you can play is a Maelstrom. I'm playing a red card on a red card, so that's legal. And this reverses the order of play. If you remember, we started this going clockwise. Well, this would flip, so now the next player is the one going counterclockwise. But you know what? That player might also play a Maelstrom, because remember, you can always play the same color or the same card of a different color, or the same color as well. So here we could play this. And now, guess what? This goes back to clockwise again. Now let's say the next player plays this. It's purple on purple, that's fine. Visit Davy Jones's locker. You skip the next player's turn in the direction of that play arrow. Now let's say the next player plays Shanghai. The next player, always in the arrow direction of play, would switch hands with any other player of their choice. Maybe the next player plays Squall. Then all players switch hands and you do it in the direction of play. So you're gonna take your hand of cards and pass it in the direction that the arrow is. Now there's another special card similar to Cannonballs that also can sort of stack a little bit where someone might play the Stuck with the Tab card and this causes the next player to take one card from each player. But instead, maybe they have another one of those cards and they play that, and they just pass the buck to the next player, and whoever ends up being stuck with the tab has to be the one to take one card from each player. And even worse, after drawing that card, their turn ends. Now there are some wild cards that can be played on any color, like the Warrant. It says it right there, wild cards, and the next player in the direction of play would have to draw four cards, and that's their whole turn. But have no fear, the letter of Mark, another wild card, will cancel that Warrant. Now, if someone plays the Kraken card, everyone discards their entire hand and they're gonna draw eight new cards. However, this Kraken card comes out and kind of goes underneath this Captain's card. Just, just make sure that this never gets shuffled back in because if you ever run out of the draw pile, you'll take the discard pile, shuffle it, and make a new one. And you wanna make sure that the Kraken's only used once per game. Now, the player that played that Kraken card also gets to decide the color, and then the next player in the direction of play will start. Now, at some moment, you might have only two cards left in your hand. Now, if you successfully play one, you only have one left. And at this point in time, you must call Scuttled. Now, technically speaking, you're supposed to call Scuttled before you take your hands off the card that you're playing. And if someone realizes that you didn't do it, they're gonna call you out and you have to draw two cards from the draw pile. However, if the next player takes a turn, either drawing a card or playing a card and you haven't been caught, then that time has passed and no one can call you out for not calling Scuttle. Now it's possible, depending on what happens in the game, that you might be passed a hand that only has one card in it. And in good sportsmanship, they're supposed to give you a second or two after looking at your single card hand before calling you out for not calling Scuttled. Now earlier I suggested that, eh, you know, this is a pirate game and you might be able to cheat a little bit. Well, you can actually cheat a lot in this game. Let's say on your turn, again, you're either playing a card of the same color or the same type, or you're drawing a card. Now, even if you can play, you don't have to, you can draw a card. However, you could cheat and go like this, well, nobody's looking and say, you know what, I drew a card. But if you get caught and they call you out, you gotta draw four cards from the draw deck. Another sneaky way to cheat is to just play a card that you just assume matches. So this has to be a blue or a six, and I'll play this. It kind of looks similar because it's purple, but it also kind of looks similar because it's a, an I and a V. It just happens to be a four instead of a six. If you play it and nobody notices and the next player starts their turn, well, you've gotten away with it. Or it's possible to try to get rid of more than one card by being sneaky about it and putting it so they can't even really tell, but they might be able to tell after you play it down. So you gotta pay attention because if you get called out for this and they look and you played more than one, you gotta draw four. There's no penalty for someone calling you out for cheating if you weren't actually cheating. And you will win if you are the player to go out and scuttle all your cards.
You can also play multiple games and have a set number of games won to be the winner of the whole session, or you could play for points. And if you do that, you could start with a goal of whoever gets the 30 points wins, and then you'd add 10 points to this goal for every player over the player count of three. So if you had four players, then it'd be 40 points, for example. Five players, 50 points. Now, the winner of the round, the one that goes out, gets all of the cards left in other players' hands, and you count them up. Any basic numbered cards are worth one point, regardless of the number on the card. And any special cards are worth two points, and the Kraken is worth five points. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Scuttled faster than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, this is on Kickstarter right now. I placed that link in the description of this video if you want to go there and check out the project page and all the different pledge levels available. And if you have any further questions about the rules, you can leave them here as comments. Yeah. <laughs>